Hi students, welcome back to another session. Today we'll be doing partial fractions, a full tutorial which encompasses past papers going back all the way down to 2015 and coming all the way up to that 2019 for the paper twos, keep unit two. So let's get into it. Now on screen, I have a question from 2019 and I'm selecting only the sections that have the partial fractions component. Um, this would be taken from either question one or two. You can verify. So reading this question, we see they're saying by expressing this uh, fraction here in the partial fraction form, right? They're, they're asking us to show. So this is a proof. And here is the answer that they want us to show. So how are we going to go ahead and start our question? Well, first of all, when you're doing a proof, you always need to remember that you need to start off your paragraph. Math is a language and it requires specific uh, context. Okay, so our proof begins like this. We will start from the very beginning <laughs> and our beginning is that complex looking fraction that we have there where both our numerator and denominator are polynomials that contain degrees of two and higher. All right, so as you know with partial fractions, you need to know how to split your denominator. This is the important part here. You need to know how to split up your denominator into specific components. Now, in this denominator, we have only one context. So what you can do, your first initial step should be to attempt to recreate your denominator such that it's in a factorized format. So you have those brackets. So let's go ahead and begin doing that. So leaving your numerator untouched and recognizing that, hey, y to the power of 4 plus 2y squared plus 1 can be safely factorized as follows. You can go ahead and you can simply factorize that into uh, repeated factors down below. Now, because they are repeated, you can also choose to write your question as follows. You can rewrite it as y squared plus 2y plus 1 all over y squared plus 1 all squared. So now we have what you call a nonlinear. How is it nonlinear? Well, within brackets, you can see that we have that power of 2 present. So it's definitely a nonlinear term within brackets. And this was also what we call a repeated factor. Why is it repeated? Because of the presence of that power of 2 outside there. Once your power is greater than 1, it's considered to be a repeated factor. So let's get into how we generally split up a repeated factor when we are doing partial fractions. So some of the first steps we take are standard. So we will go ahead, let me change my color here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna split up, I'll rewrite my entire question. I wanna start, I wanna have everything on the same uh, level so that it's easier to work with. And don't be afraid during exams to use your space. Remember, the clearer and neater you write your answers and solutions down, the easier um, it's going to be with respect to not making mistakes and so on, right? Okay, so when something is a repeated factor, how do I know how many of the splits will be created? Well, a hint is to simply observe the power that your repeated factor is. If your power is 2, then that means your split would be 2. So in this case, 
we definitely have a split of two. So I am going to write, just give me a second here, I'm going to write down my two-way split. Now we only have one factor present on that denominator to deal with. So we will not have any more uh, additions taking place to the right. Just take note of that, okay? Okay, so what goes when we figure out how many splits we have? What goes in that numerator? What goes on the denominator? Well, let's start with the denominator. Now, whenever you have a repeated factor highlighted by that power, you want to start your first denominator with what's in bracket raised to the power of 1. That's always going to be your first denominator. And then you want to keep increasing what's within bracket, increasing that power. And you keep doing that until you reach your um, power that was present in your question. In this case, that power is 2, so we are done. Now, what about the numerator? Well, to determine what goes in our numerator, you have to observe what's contained within brackets or what your factor actually looks like. And your factor is what you would call a non-linear. It's non-linear because of that y squared being present, okay? And because it's non-linear, your numerator has a special form. And the form we usually take for nonlinear factors is the form ax plus b. Now, a mistake a lot of students are going to make is not realizing that this question is actually in terms of y. So ax plus b, even though you may have memorized it like that, please remember to change your variable to match your question. So your numerator will be of the form that you are accustomed remembering, ax plus b, except you just change that x for a y to um, be relevant to the question you are doing. And then similarly, um, your second denominator will also be of the same format. However, you remember you have um, to use different variables. So you would change that to cy plus d. You cannot use back a y plus b here because your constants must be different. And that's it. That's how you would split up a huge chunk like this into partial fractions. But an analysis of your question, what you are trying to prove. Let's go back to the question a bit. Notice that they want you to prove that your right-hand side has variables, it has coefficients in front of those uh, letters y, right? We have only variables which are unknown, a, b, c, and d. So what we need to do is go ahead and uh, solve for values of a, b, c, and d. So this is simpler. A lot of students tend to have issues with this sometimes. Some people love it. So all you have to do is consider your denominator given in your question. Okay, in this case, we have y squared plus 1. And what we're going to do is we are simply going to multiply both sides. All right, so you're going to multiply both sides um, by that denominator, y squared plus 1, all squared. And if you are multiplying both sides by the denominator, which was already present on the left, they are essentially going to cancel each other out so that your left-hand side becomes y squared plus 2y plus 1 all over y squared plus 1 squared. And if you wanted to multiply it by y squared plus 1 all squared, what happens is that they will simply cancel each other out. So on the right-hand side, let's see what's happening now. I'm going to try my best to do this very slowly. So we have a y plus b all over y squared plus 1. And we want to multiply this by y squared plus 1 all squared. Now, this is raised to the power of 1. So when you perform a simple canceling, 
we will end up getting y squared plus 1 to the power of 1 on top. So I'm going to simply write that a bit closer. Um, let me see if I can just make the screen a little so we can fit it all on one screen, perhaps. Yes, we can try to do that. Beautiful. Okay, and now all that's left for us to do is to multiply our last fraction here, cy plus d, all on y squared plus 1 squared, and we're simply going to multiply it by y squared plus 1 all squared. Now, this and this will simply cancel, which is beautiful. It simplifies everything. Now, before I move on to what we're going to write next, I just want to say that on screen, it looks complicated. But sometimes what you need to do is to take your time. It's easy to miss out a squared sign. It's easy to miss out a bracket. And I know some of you guys are focusing on that time frame that you have to work within. But if you know yourself personally and you're accustomed to making a lot of mistakes because you write quickly, then perhaps it might be worth it for you to just take a step back and slow down. Maybe 60 seconds extra might help you earn eight full marks rather than losing a lot of marks because you ended up missing a two here and there. Okay, so on the left hand side, after simplifying, we will get y squared plus 2y plus 1 is equal to ay plus b. And I am also going to place that in brackets so that we know we are multiplying two complete uh, factors there and not just the B. Okay, beautiful. So that green part there cleans up to this purple part here. And usually when you are solving um, for values of A, B, C, and D in partial fractions, you tend to uh, substitute certain values. Now in this case, I can see that my denominator that my original question had up here if I were to set that equal to zero, then I would end up getting y squared is equal to, uh, you know, negative one, which generates a imaginary value, which we can't use. So what we're going to do is we are going to use that method of equating coefficients. All right, guys, so we are simply going to equate coefficients. All right, so we have a lot of variables to solve for. So we would definitely have to equate the coefficients perhaps of all of your terms. All right, so equating coefficients of uh, y cubed. Well, maybe what we want to do is just try to expand this out just a bit. So perhaps I should have expanded this. Let's expand this. Um, so on the right hand side, we would get, so I will change this here and let's just erase that for a second. We'll write it back shorthand soon. So we actually have y squared plus 2y plus 1 and using your FOIL method, you'll get a y cubed. So it's a y by y squared plus a uh, a y by one, that's a y. Then b by y squared, that's b y squared. And then b by one, that's b. And of course, you bring down your last two terms there. Nice. We have cleaned everything up. Now we can really <laughs> equate our coefficients here. So I'm shortcutting it now. So we're going to equate coefficients of y cubed, that highest power that we have. So equating coefficients of y cubed will give us on the left hand side, notice they are none. So we can write zero and on our right hand side, the coefficients of y cubed, the only one we have is a. So boom, <laughs> very, very quickly, we have generated a value for a. Let's continue working out that coefficient of y squared and see what happens. Well, on the left, the coefficient of y squared is 1. So we'll write 1 is equal to, and on our right, we have y squared present once. 
that's the only term we have is b. So boom, we just got two values very, very quickly. What about the coefficient of y? Well, on the left-hand side, that coefficient of y is 2. So we'll set up shop, and we will have 2 is equal to, on our right-hand side, we have 1, and we also have 2. So we have a plus c being two coefficients of y. Now, to find for the value of c, recall that you found a to be equal to 0. So therefore, you can safely say that c, since a is 0, c has a value of 2. That's not 2, that's C. <laughs> C has a value of 2. There we go. And I will rearrange this. All right, so we will write C is equal to 2. Boom. So we just generated three lovely values. Nice and clean, no fractions, no negative values. And lastly, we are going to equate coefficients of constants. Okay? Sorry, not coefficients of constants. What am I saying? We are going to equate our constants, guys. So on the left-hand side, our constant is positive 1. So we're going to write 1 on the left is equal to what are our constants on the right? B plus D. So B plus D. Now, do we have values for any of them? Yes, we do. We have B being equal to 1. So that means that 1 is equal to 1 plus D. So therefore, D has a value of 0. So I'm going to write that down here. B, D has a value of 0. And boom, just like that, guys, we got our four values. Very, very nice and simple. And now, all that's left for us to do is to put our answer together. So how do we put our answer together? Well, we need to go back to where we split our partial fraction. So on screen, I am going to write my equal sign here, okay? And I'm going to simply replace all my letters with the values we generated. So we got A to have a value of zero, so over here, we will have zero Y, which is just nothing. And then B, we got to have a value of one, so we will write that one. And then on the denominator, we are still left with y squared plus 1. Now, continuing, we found that c had a value of 2. So we get 2y, and d had a value of 0. So we have nothing left to write on the top. And our denominator now has simply, we are going to rewrite that. And is that our answer? Um, let's go back and see. So going back to the original question, yes, that is our answer. They wanted us to prove that. If I go back, they wanted us to prove that our partial fraction breaks up into 1 over y squared plus 1 plus 2y over y squared plus 1 all squared. So now that we have generated our final answer, all that's left for us to do is simply to end our proof. Okay, guys, glad you stayed back to see another past paper question. So we are moving on to 2018, where we will be looking at the, I think it, this was taken from the first question. Well, obviously the first or the second, but I think it was the first. And let's see how to split this up into partial fractions. So first to begin with, we have to observe our denominators that first are uh, factor there is just a linear, we have a linear factor, all right, and our second factor within brackets, it's non-linear, and it's also repeated, so that means both our numerator and the denominator will be affected there. So how do we split something up like that? Well, let's begin. We'll rewrite our question x by x squared plus 1 all squared. And first of all, we are going to observe our first factor, our linear factor, right? That is going to take a standard form of just a on x. That's how you break up a linear factor into partial fractions. Then we're going to add. 
And now we're going to move on to our second factor there. So first of all, it's repeated and the power present is 2. So that tells us that we have, we'll have 2 um, splits taking place for that factor. And on the denominator, starting from the lowest power of 1, we will start from x squared plus 1 to the power of 1. And we will increase that power till we reach 2 which is what the question has present there. So we have finished our denominator, but because it's also a repeated, um, sorry, nonlinear, our numerator is just going to be a bit different. We are not going to have the regular B and C, no. When something is nonlinear, you need to have your numerator in the form B, X plus C, and then D, X plus E. Okay, so um, remember to change your variables. You cannot use the same variables um, on your numerators. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and begin with our cross multiplication, which is our typical next step. So we always cross multiply, not cross multiply, sorry, multiply. We always multiply across both sides of our equation by that ever-present denominator. Okay, so we are going to multiply across by x, by x squared plus 1 squared. So uh, the, first, um, the first question I did in this tutorial, I took slow steps in showing you guys how to cancel. Um, you can practice some of that on your own and you can see if you are able to generate the answers as I'm going to do quickly on the screen now. Okay, so... Going forward, we will get, once you multiply your left-hand side by what's already on the denominator, they cancel each other out all the time. So typically, your left-hand side ends up becoming just what's ever on your numerator. And then multiplying each of these terms, starting with this one, if I multiply across by this, that those x's will cancel and I will just be left with the a by x squared plus 1 all squared. Then the second term, my numerator, will remain as is. And what happens to my denominator? I can see that I'm going to have an x term and one of these terms are going to cancel, leaving me with just one. So I will have x also by, so I'll put this in brackets, and also by x squared plus 1. So that 1 turned out to be quite large. All right, and then finally, you have dx plus e, and when you multiply once again by what's written over here, you will end up just getting that entire chunk being multiplied by x. Okay, so now we begin figuring out, do we equate coefficients uh, or do we go ahead and uh, use some of those given values? Um, now, how do we decide what values to get um, to substitute? Well, you can observe your denominator again and you can set those to equal to zero. So we can use uh, values such as when x is equal to zero and we would also generate 1 being, uh, let me see, that's squared minus 1. So let's see what happens when x is equal to 0, because we can't use that value of x being equal to minus 1, x squared being equal to minus 1, we'll get an imaginary number. So on the left-hand side here, if x is just 0, that left-hand side just becomes 1. And the right-hand side, let's see what happens if all of these are, x's become 0 here, here. Well, this term will cancel, clearly. The entire thing will go bye-bye. And similarly, this term will cancel as well. So we will just actually end up getting um, some component of that first term. So if x squared here is uh, 0, then we will get a by 1 all squared. So this just implies that a has a value of 1. And boom, just like that, guys, we got a value for a. All right, so moving forward, um, we would definitely have to expand this just a bit. 
um, because you can clearly see we don't really, I mean, you can substitute other values for x if you want to, but I'm going to try to expand my part in green there so I can equate coefficients. Okay, so expanding that, I will get from before we had x fourth plus one is equal to what's that? A, we're going to square this now, so we'll get a by x to the power of uh, 4 plus a by, um, we can say 1 squared, so that's just a. And then finally, plus 2ax squared. All right, so I just um, simply expanded the brackets and multiplied each of the terms by a. All right, moving on. The next one is just going to be a little more work. Um, we will multiply, you're multiplying bx by x to get bx squared, and then bx squared. In fact, let me just go ahead and move to the side and with it. I don't want to make any mistakes, right? So let's multiply that bx by x, and that's c by x as well. And then I will write uh, x squared plus 1 separately. Okay, so now we have two brackets. So let's go ahead and expand these brackets and see what we get. So bx squared multiplied by x squared is going to give us bx to the power of 4. Then bx squared multiplied by 1 is just going to give us bx squared. Then cx by x squared is going to give us cx cubed. Then cx multiplied by 1 is going to give us cx. And that gives us our terms for that middle expansion there. And finally, guys, finally, we are going to just trying to fit this all on screen. Okay, just making sure you guys can see it clearly. All right. And then finally, plus, I might as well change the color to make it look pretty. <laughs> okay, um, so plus... Uh, D x squared plus e x. There we go. So let's start equating some coefficients, shall we? Equating coefficients. So let's equate coefficients of uh, some of the easiest ones that are missing on the left are x cubed. So I want to see what happens if I equate coefficients of x cubed. Now on the left, coefficients of x cubed are zero because there exists none. And on the right, x cubed terms, we have only one present, boom. So we just got a value for c, just like that. I'm also going to attempt to equate coefficients of x squared. Um, on the left, we have none, so that'll be zero. And on the right, coefficients of x squared will be 2a. Let's see if we have any more, plus b, and then plus d. Please do not make the mistake and write dx squared. You are equating the coefficients. So we have values for a. a is actually 1. So I'll actually just write that in here. a is 1. And b, we don't have a value for d. We actually also do not have a value for. So what we will get is just an equation that we can come back to. Um, we will have b plus d is equal to negative 2. So let's go ahead and try to, let's try to equate constants and see what happens. Maybe we'll get another value. So let's equate our constants here. Okay, so equating some constants on the left, we have 1. And on the right, our constants, we have our a. Let's see what else we have. Constants, constants, constants. Oh, so equating constants actually gave us uh, a value we already had. So I guess we have to, no choice, equate coefficients of x. And I believe that will give us our final solution. So equating coefficients of x on the left, you have 0. And on the right, coefficients of x present are, we have c and we have e plus e. So we know that c is equal to 0. This is a 0, by the way. We know that c is equal to 0. So since c is equal to 0, that implies that e is also equal to 0. So boom, 
we just got a value for E. So we have values for A, C, and E. Now we only need to get values for B and D. So we're going to finally do up our last one, the big X4, which is coefficient of X4 on the left hand side. That's one because we do have one term present there. And on the right hand side, we have A. Let's see what else we have. We have A X to the power of four. We have B plus B. Um, going down the road, that's it. We have used every single thing. And from before, we know that A has a value of 1. So if A has a value of 1, that implies that we have a value for B being equal to 0. So boom, we just found our value for A, B, C, and E. Now we can finally go back to this one here and we can solve for D. If B has a value of 0, that means that our value of D will simply be equal to negative 2. All right, guys, so we have all of our values. Now it's just time for us to put everything together. Okay, so all that's left for us to do now is simply we just have to put our stuff together. Let me see if I can just close this in a bit so that I can get to the actual question. Yes, that's good. So going back up top just a tad bit so that you guys can see our split, our partial fraction split. We generated a value of a to be equal to zero here. Sorry, one. So we will get that substitution to look like one on x. Then plus, let's see, B had a value of 0, C has a value of 0. So this entire fraction has disappeared. D has a value of negative 2, so you will get minus 2x. And E had a value of 0 as well. So we will just end up getting minus 2x on x squared plus 1 all squared. If you want a nicer way to write this, you could have uh, written it to look like this, minus 2x all on x squared plus 1 squared. All right, guys, so was it a proof? Let's go back to the question. No, they just simply, yes, it was. They said to show that. So if you did not begin your question properly, remember to go back. And once you have your victory success, because it was a proof, you know, I love proofs because you always know what you're working towards. It's kind of like working backwards. Well, not really, but you know what your answer is going to look like. So it's always victory <laughs> when you get your solution, right? So because it's a proof, um, I would actually write this entire statement over here. I would choose to write this entire statement as my last line so that my proof flows beautifully. And um, writing that last here, we will just simply get um, that on screen. And then you end your proof by writing your nice little QED box and your proof has ended. So guys, that's uh, how you would apply partial fractions um, to split a rational function, especially where your denominator contains factors that have uh, repeat repetitions um, and they are non-linear. Okay, so stay tuned. We are moving on. This is a definite marathon. We are going all the way down till 2015. So we just finished 2018. Stay tuned for 2017. So glad you stayed back, guys. You can take a break now if you like. You can pause this video and you can come back. But let's go ahead and work this question. All right, so they say to use partial fractions. So we have yet another proof. So we are going to start our question because we remembered this time. <laughs> All right, so I mean, sometimes you may forget, but the important thing is that when you are reviewing your answers, you just always make sure that you look through your statements and you have those key components of a proof, right? 
So Prof, we are required to show um, that. So we are going to start with our question there. And our question has 2x squared minus x plus 4 all on x cubed plus 4x. Now, first of all, we need to convert that denominator into a form that actually has uh, factors. So we're gonna factorize here very simply. Uh, we're gonna factor out that x to get x squared plus four. Now we have a beautiful format here where we can split this up into the following. We will get, I'm seeing it's definitely non-repeated. So I think this is enough space to me to fit, space for me to fit my solution of this split. Uh, my first split will happen with this factor and my numerator will take the form of a on x okay and my second split will take the form a singular because it doesn't have a power of three or four or five or any power except for one so we're just gonna have one denominator present on that bottom there and observing our denominator being a, a, a non-linear form, our numerator um, that's related to that denominator is going to take the form bx plus c. Once again, we do not start from ax because it was already used in your first split. So let's go ahead and let's do what we do best, which is multiply across by your denominator. Okay, so we're going to multiply across by our denominator. So I will write that multiply across by um, x cubed, sorry, x by x squared plus 4 rather. We're going to use this and we will get what? What are we going to get? Well, on the left hand side, everything is going to cancel on the denominator. That's the point. If it does not, it means you didn't choose the correct denominator. And on your right hand side, you're simply going to get a by x squared plus 4 plus uh, bx plus c by x. So this one is really nice. Um, let's see, what values could we use to find for those constants? Well, setting my uh, denominator there to 0, I can use values like when x is equal to 0, let's see what happens. When x is 0 on the left, I will get 4. And when x is 0 on the right, I will get 4a. Because 4a, um, just 4a, because if x is 0, this goes to 0 as well as this. All right, so. And then this implies that a has a value of 1. So boom, we just got one of our constants, guys. Woo! Okay, so I can see that um, based on what my uh, denominator looks like there, if I set this to zero, x squared plus four, that factor is going to produce an imaginary root. So we are not going to be able to use any standard values there. So what we're gonna do is simply go ahead. We're gonna expand that right-hand side of what's in green there. And then we're gonna begin to equate coefficients. All right, of course, some students usually tend to go straight into equating coefficients rather than uh, substituting any value, and that's fine as well. Okay, so I simply expanded my right-hand side, really. Um, straightforward. So what we're going to do is we are going to equate coefficients. So let's see what we have. Um... How about we equate a uh, constant first? See what we come up with. So equating constants, we will get on the left four, and on the right we have oh, why did I do that actually? <laughs> we would have four is equal to four. <laughs> so it's true. For, well, at least we know we expanded correctly. Um, let's equate coefficients of x squared. Okay, so equating coefficients of x squared, you would get 2 on this side is equal to a plus b. 
right? So we have an equation here. Let's try equating coefficients of x. On the left, we'll get minus 1. And on the right, we will get c to be equal to minus 1. So we have one solid value for that. All right, so we equated coefficients of x squared, x, as well as we also used a value of 0. Um, from previously, we also found the value of 1, um, a to be equal to 1. So we will substitute that value over here to get 1 plus b such that b has a value of 2 minus 1. That gives us 1. I was, I was going to actually substitute another value of x, a random 1, but I didn't realize that we actually generated a value for a here. So sometimes it's good to look around in the clutter and see what you have, which is the reason why I use these highlighted boxes. I mean... It, it helps, right? It stood out to me when I just um, carried my eyes above. I was able to see that I actually had a value for E. Um, so we have all three values. We have A being equal to 1, B equal to 1, and C being equal to minus 1. Let's go ahead and put our answer together, shall we? So putting our answer together, we have on screen that we had A being equal to 1. So I will erase this and I will write uh, 1 here. B had a value of 1 also, so that coefficient of x is 1. And C has a value of minus 1. So we will change this to be equal to minus 1. Okay, so, so we will write that right-hand side over here. We have 1 on x plus x minus 1 all over x squared plus 4. Now, looking at this, there's a first step we can try before we attempt any form of division. We can't attempt division because uh, our denominator has a higher um, polynomial um, than the numerator, so the division is never going to work definitely. But an easier step is to observe that um, the numerator has two terms. So, Use of basic rules of maths mean that you can actually split that up into two. You can have that first term over your denominator and your second term over your denominator, such that you end up splitting it into x on x squared plus 4 minus 1 on x squared plus 4. And there you have it. That's actually the answer that they have requested us to find. It was actually more straightforward than I thought. So guys, um, sometimes when you're stuck, it's not so clear to see how close you are to the answer. But maybe take a break, do another question, clear your mind on it, allow the brain to process any back um, while you're working on some other question, and then come back to it. And chances are you might see your answers just stand out. Okay, so we have finally proven that this answer is such, and that's the end. Um, stay tuned, where I will be still doing another past paper question coming up next. Okay, guys, so we have the function f of x on screen there. This is a simple split. All we are going to do is we are going to get a on x minus 1, and we will get bx plus c on x squared plus 1. How did I arrive at that? Well, simple. It's because our first factor is linear, non-repeated, and our second factor is non-linear, hence your numerator being that form, and your denominator is also non-repeated, so we only have one uh, split taking place there. Okay, so I think you guys should be getting the hang of it now. What's the next step? Yep, that's correct. We're going to multiply across by our denominator, right, which is x minus 1 by x squared plus 1. There we go. On the left-hand side, we will get x squared plus 2x plus 3 is equal to, on the right-hand side, a by x squared plus 1 plus uh, bx plus c by 
x minus 1. I think this time I'm just going to expand brackets and equate coefficients here. Of course, you could substitute individual values of x. A frequent question students tend to have is, how do you know which values of x to use first? Um, now, you can use any value of x you want, but it's always nice to set your denominator equal to 0, whatever you are multiplying across, and... When you set that equal to zero, I mean each of the factors actually, not, not the entire um, denominator. Set each of the factors equal to zero. And uh, those usually result in uh, perfect um, values for x, which tend to result in a lot of cancellations. All right? So moving forward here, um, expanding these brackets, we will get uh, b x squared minus bx plus cx minus c. And what we're going to do is just simply perform a bit of equating coefficients, people. So if you are hearing any noise in the background, <laughs> um, it's definitely, it definitely sounds like a, a pet fight um, happening there. <laughs> I'm hearing, it's not my pets, guys. But I'm hearing a lot of animals uh, barking in the background. So they're probably strangers passing by very close to them. So, yeah. Um, okay, so equating coefficients of, let's just say, x squared. So the coefficient of x squared here is 1. And that's equal to, on our right-hand side, a plus b. Okay, so let's equate coefficients of x now, and we will get uh, minus b plus c. So we'll get 2 is equal to minus b plus c. And hopefully we get something here. <laughs> Equating constants will give us 3 on this side is equal to a minus c. a minus c. So it seems like we might have to perform a bit of substitution because we are not exactly getting a nice clean value. Um, but I don't want to substitute. So what I am going to do is substitute a raw value of x. So setting my first factor of x minus 1 to 0 gives me x being equal to 1. So when x has a value of 1, let's see what happens on the left. Uh, when x has a value of 1 on the left, we'll get 1 plus 2 plus 3. That's 6. And on the right-hand side, when x has a value of 1, we will get a plus a plus b minus b, which cancels, plus c minus c, which cancels. So you end up getting 6 is equal to 2a. Therefore, a has a value of 3. Boom. So sometimes you have to multi, not multitask, but use multiple methods when you find that uh, equating coefficients doesn't give you all your values or setting your factors equal to zero doesn't give you all your values. You might need to do a mix of two. All right, so we have a value for A. So that means we can solve for everything pretty much. If A is three over here and here, we can replace with 3, and that will give us B having a value of, that's 1 minus 3, that's minus 2. Boom, we got a value for B, guys. And uh, lastly, we also got a value for C. C will be equal to 0. All right, so C is equal to 0. I wanted to write that in green, <laughs> but it didn't happen. So we have all our values, all our constants for A, B, and C. We did not even need to use that second uh, um, equating there. So let's put our answer together, shall we? So on screen, originally, we had the form A, and A we got to be 3. So that's 3 on x minus 1 plus b we got to be negative 2 so that's minus 2x and c we got to be 0 so that's just minus 2x on x squared plus 1 so perhaps a nice little cleanup could be to just change those signs there and was it a proof let's go up and check yes it was um so be sure to 
highlight your um, answer at the bottom. Take note, the only reason I'm writing it up top so I can see the answer close to the question for you guys on screen. But in exams, you want to make sure that uh, you write your um, you make sure you write your answers um, so that it flows. All right, guys. So make sure to end every proof with the um, lovely QED box, and you are done. And that's it. Stay tuned, where we'll be covering the final past paper. I know it's, it's been a lot. But I think after doing this entire tutorial, you guys would be so ready for any partial fraction question that may come. Okay, so stay tuned. You're almost there. We're almost done. Um, hold on. Okay, guys. So on screen, you can see that we have a past paper that looks a bit different. And these are the older ones. So the format is a bit different. But... You'd never lose to practice any type of partial fraction question. Remember, the aim is always to be able to do any question that you see in partial fractions across the board, not just to do the ones that are rev relevant to uh, the particular examination board that you guys may be writing. Okay, so looking at this question, um, is it a partial fraction question? Hmm... Well, first of all, it's definitely rational. It's some sort of fraction. And looking at what we have here, we have that numerator and denominator presenting with the exact same highest power. So, I mean, we can't find a proper way to split 9x squared plus 4 into like a factorization process. But what we can do, uh, remembering... Old school ways, this question is more the form of like um, when you use a factor theorem, remainder theorem, that long division process. So to do this question, if you were able to see it, it's actually just a simple long division, right? So our numerator is going to go on the inside on our denominator, which is always called our divisor. What we're dividing by will go on the outside here. How we just begin to select that first term there and the true process of division? We're going to say how many times can 9x squared go into 18x squared? And that answer is just definitely uh, 2. So we'll write 2 on top here. And to generate our next line, we're going to take that 2 and simply multiply by each of these terms here. So 2 by 9x squared gives us back that 18x squared it's supposed to, right? If it doesn't, it means that you divided wrong. And then 4 multiplied by 2 gives us positive 8. Then we're going to do our typical subtraction and see what's left. Our numerator has that value of 2 on top and we have already found our remainder to be 5. So if you were to write this in a proper form, you can safely say that after division that your question works out to get a whole number of 2 and a remainder of 5 as a fraction of your divisor. All right, and there you have it. You can also state where... You got your values of A to be equal to 2, and you also got your value of B to be equal to 5. So quite a simple question, but upon first glance, it might stun you because you're thinking partial fractions all the way, you know, you'd never probably think of that basic method of long division. So open your horizons, broaden your mind. The more you expose yourselves to different types of questions, if they do come, you will be prepared because you have already stored that method in your memory so that when familiarity happens, you know, it's just to source that from inside of you and to bring it back out. So guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you guys would like to see even more questions on partial fractions um, with specificity in a certain area, be sure to comment down below and I will be sure to include another tutorial highlighting your issue. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Take care and bye-bye.